And hello everybody, welcome back. It's Overwatch League, the new anniversary event is out. Um, it's uh, been fun, you can go out and uh, play it if you want some loot boxes, if you want uh, any any of the event skins from any, any event in the past for Overwatch, they are now available. So that's pretty cool, I like that they did that. Um, like the newer events, there's there are three, but then for the uh, some of the older events, there are only 1,000. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just there's like a big uh, rotation now with uh, the brawl, <clears throat> everything like that. They got competitive deathmatch. Uh, say hello to Hanzos and Brigitte's and that. Uh, they bring they brought back Junkers Junkers Stein's Revenge. Junkenstein's Revenge, um, and they're just going to keep rotating it with new stuff, so that's pretty cool. Um, I've been playing it on PC and PS4 with my friends, um, so yeah. But anyway, this is all about Overwatch League. It's week number two of stage four, <clears throat> and this is it. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, every match, super important. Um, Last week was very interesting because some of the teams that were like three and four, um, like Dynasty and the Spitfire, both lost. So they are they are now very close in the standings to um, to like the rest of the teams, like through number eight. So even uh, the London Spitfire number three are not safe. If they lose a couple more games, they could very well find themselves towards the bottom of the league. Um, so yeah, the, the standing. <laughs> Three through eight, and even two. If Boston loses a couple more matches, like in a row or something, um, two through eight could be really, really close. So it's going to be an insane finish to the season. We got some great matches this week, and with that, going to hop right in. Number one, just just talking about them. It's the Boston Uprising. They're taking on the Dallas Fuel. So the Fuel, they're, uh, they're sitting at seven and twenty-five. The Boston is at twenty-two and ten. Um, Fuel went one and one in week one. Uprising went zero oh and two. So it's like, oh wait, wait, Dallas maybe? Well, well, Dallas beat Shanghai. Uh, their last three wins have all come against Shanghai. They have not beaten. I think in their last twenty-one matches, they're three and eighteen, three no against Shanghai, zero oh and eighteen against everyone else. So, uh, yeah. Um, they have not beaten a quality team in a long time. I do think they've been performing better. Um, when I was watching them play my Gladiators, uh, Gladiators did win 4-0, but Fuel had a couple of maps were very close. Um, they're they're a good defensive team, um, so I think I think whenever Dallas is the home team, whenever the other team has to attack first, they have a bit of an advantage because they can they can have a good defense, they can like get a little bit of confidence, and they can uh, make their win condition for the offense a bit uh, a bit less um, hard. So I think that they definitely have more of an advantage when they're home. Uh, Uprising are struggling. This could potentially be one of Dallas's best shots, probably their best shot besides when they play Florida, of getting a win, um, in uh, getting a second win in Stage 4. Uh, they're playing on Blizzard World, Horizon the Lunar Colony, Oasis, and Watchpoint. Now, I think this is a decent opportunity for Fuel, but I also do not think they'll win. I think Boston will win this one. I don't even think it'll be that close. Um... Boston, I think they know that they're they're own two right now. If they start to if they lose to the fuel, then I think there's going to be some major confidence issues with them. They're going to be in a three match slide. They're going to start forgetting about that awesome stage three that they had. So I don't think they're going to let themselves lose this one. Um, Blizzard World has been a very uh, weak map for Dallas, so I think Boston will get out to a good start. They'll win that map. Um, going to Horizon Lunar Colony, I think it'll be pretty close, but Boston will win because they are just better on. Uh, two CP than most teams in the league. I'd say they're the second best or best two CP team in the league. Um, then moving on to Oasis, Fuel have looked pretty solid on Oasis. Um, they were it was close against the Gladiators. They beat Shanghai on it. Um, they they've won on it in the past, even like in State One back in the day. So this one could be close. I could see the Fuel taking this one just because. Um, Mistakes has been so weak for Boston. Um, it's kind of like the striker show right now. He, and when Mistakes isn't like at least performing like solidly, um, like when he's doing fine, like he doesn't have to go crazy. But when he's performing at a pretty good level, and the teams have to like know that he's there and like have to watch for him a bit, 
um, then striker can do really well because he has a little bit more freedom but when mistakes isn't doing anything it makes it a lot harder on striker when you're kind of solo dpsing it so um we'll see if mistakes performs a lot better in this match like he more like he did in stage three um rather than the first week of this stage but i mean, i see i see the fuel i think they could pull that one out um i do think boston will win on watch point though and take the series three to one um yeah, this is like, this is, Dallas has to know this is the match. But Boston is struggling to get the new meta. You're, you're defending first, which is an advantage for you. You're on decent maps for you. Not their, it's not their best draw for a map pool, but it's, it's not their worst. And like, I mean, Boston, they were, they were so strong in like the stage three map pool. And obviously this one is different. So I think this is a decent chance for fuel. If they can get off to a good start and really hold down Blizzard World and maybe eke out a win there then I think they could make this a very interesting series. However, I don't think that'll happen. I think Boston's superior uh, teamwork and just overall talent will get them through it, and they will win it 3-1. to one. So then we got another uh, one of the lower teams taking on a team uh, in the playoffs. We got the Florida Mayhem taking on the LA Valiant. So uh, Mayhem started out the stage 0-2. Valiant are 2-0. Um... I don't think this one will be very close. Valiant are very good at playing uh, the lower teams. They never really struggle with the lower teams in the league. Um, I mean, they, they won the first three against Shanghai very easily. Then they did lose the last map, but they subbed in four of their uh, bench players who had pretty much like never played or barely played. So it's understandable that they lost that map. And they've always taken care of business against like the Shock and uh, Fuel, teams like that. So I think Valiant will take care of this one. They're on Kings Row, Hanamura. Li Zhang and Watchpoint. Um, I think Florida Florida's not great for this meta. They have a couple of good Tracer players, and Tracer isn't as useful. Um, Tavik, he's helped a little bit with his flexibility, but again, he's been a little underwhelming as um, just like overall. Um, I haven't really seen Manatine on uh, on the Zarya at all, and you need a Zarya in this meta. So I think that it's not a great meta for Florida. I think they will have a rough stage. I think LA will win this one with ease. They got Kings Row, Hanamura, Li Zhang, and Watchpoint. I could see I could see Valiant going up 3-0 and then maybe putting in their like their most of their B team again and trying that again. Um, but maybe they'll just leave everyone in. If they leave everyone in, I could definitely see this one being a 4-0. Um, Valiant are, I've said it before, they are really lucky. They, the first like half of stages, they always get weak teams and then their strong teams that they face are always at the end. So they can usually like get off to a good start and, um, yeah, if they win this, they're going to, they're going to be in pretty darn good shape, um, for the division. Um, I mean, Dynasty is kind of falling apart. Um, Gladiators are looking strong, but Valiant are two games ahead of them. Plus they have a better map differential. So as long as they take care of business in most of their matches, they don't really have to worry about them. So yeah, I think I think Valiant are shaping up to be the winners, winners of the uh, Pacific Division. Um, so yeah, I see that. I see that one being a 4-0, maybe a 3-1, but uh, Valiant win it with ease. Now the last match of today, which will be probably the best, one of the best matchups, if not the best, of the week and of these couple days. Um, so it's Houston Outlaws taking on LA Gladiators. Two teams. They're 18. They're both 18 and 14. Houston does have a better map differential. Um, they are plus. They are plus 19 to LA's uh, plus 19 or plus 19 to LA's plus 11. So they got eight map wins on them. They're tied in, in overall records. Um, Houston is seven. Gladiators are eight, as we've all known. Um, but with the with the dynasty kind of falling apart, their map differential is really it's been cut down to just plus sixteen. They're only nineteen and thirteen. So, like I said before, I think I think that outlaws or gladiators will get that sixth spot, and I think dynasty will fall out. Um, I think the only other team that could fall out is potentially the valiant. But like I said, they take they don't lose against like teams that are worse than them. So I think they'll probably go six and four again this stage, and that's going to be good enough unless the Gladiators like win out, which I don't think they will. Um, so I think Valiant will be in. Philly's looking. I think they'll be fine. Um, maybe the Spitfire, but I think they'll get it together. Um, 
so yeah, this is a huge match for these two teams. I think, honestly, I think whichever team wins this match will probably make the, will like, probably has an 80% chance of making the, the overall playoffs, and the team that loses is going to be in big trouble. Um, and they're going to need to go on a big win streak, especially if it's Gladiators because of their map differential. And, uh, I mean, both teams are looking very strong with the new meta. Um, so it should be it should be a great match. Um, the map pool is good for both teams. I think it probably favors Houston a little more um, because they're playing on Kings Row, Hanamura, Oasis, and then Dorado. So last time on Kings Row, uh, when they played in Stage 2, the Gladiators did beat Outlaws. But overall, Outlaws have been very good on this stage, and that was like on this map, but that was like a very, that was an outlier uh, game for them. And uh, every matchup between these teams seems to be extremely close. Um, the Gladiators, I think for the Gladiators, they need, it, they need to take games one or two. If the Gladiators lose games one and two, they're done. If it's 0-2 Houston at the break, there's no reverse sweep coming in. Um, I think if Gladiators go one and one, this one goes to five, and I think that's what will happen. I think Outlaws will probably take Kings Row, but it'll be very close. I think LA will edge them out on Hanamura. I think LA will then take Oasis to go up 2-1, but then I think Outlaws will tie it up on Dorado, and that sends them to a tiebreaker on Oasis. Um, and that's that's kind of what I'm hoping for at this point. Like, I could see this one being a 3-1 for Houston, definitely. But um, if, the, if LA can just send it to 5, it's Nepal. It's a super strong map for LA. They're 9-1 on it. It's one of their, if not their best map in the entire game. So I think that if it goes to five, LA will win. And I'm going to say that is what it's going to come down to. It's going to be three to two. But the first week, the first week we saw Lynxer and Jake perform probably better than they have the entire season. So I'm thinking they're going to be good, but I don't think they can quite keep that up, especially with like Jake on different heroes, like being a god on like all of them. And Linkser had like one of the best Widow weeks I've ever seen. So I think that their performance will dip a little bit. It'll still be extremely close. It'll be a hard fought match, but LA will take it in five. Moving on to Thursday. It is the London Spitfire against San Fran Shock. So this is a must win for London. Um, like I said, they're only two games ahead of those teams that are out of the playoff run. If they lose the shock here, they're going to be 0-3. They're going to have already lost to a couple teams they should have beaten. And they're going to, I think they'll be in some trouble. Um, they they could potentially get knocked out if they lose to this, if they lose to the shock. Um, I, I hate the shock for predictions. Like, I like their team overall. I have nothing against the players. Um, but I hate them for, for doing predictions. They're so unreliable. Sometimes they look so good. Other times they look so bad. Um, it's The map pool is going to be Blizzard World, Hanamura, Oasis, and Dorado. Um, <sighs> it, this is a tough one. I think London will take match one um, on Blizzard World. I think on Hanamura, that's also going to be a good one for London. I think they'll, they should... They should definitely jump out 2-0 here. If they don't jump out 2-0, they're going to be in trouble. Because um, those have generally been their better map types. Uh, Shock have been weak on uh, on 2CP maps. Control. No, that's not control. Um, assault. Yeah, they've been weak on assault maps. Um, I think Shock will will take game 3. Um, and then 4, I could see going either way. It, I think it just depends on Birdring. Um, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good... Like, you see a decent amount of Widow play on that map. Um, sometimes like double snipers. So we'll see uh, who comes out on Dorado with like a better strategy. I think on that map, whoever, whichever coaching staff puts together a better strategy and like has the better comp to start with, I think that team will have the edge and they'll win. Uh, if this goes to five, the shot could very well win it. Con control points are just weak for the for the Spitfire. I think the Spitfire that this is the last time. If they if they blow this, this is the last time I say Spitfire is going to get it together. I will lose my I will lose the last of my faith in them if they lose this match. I think they win it three to one. I I do. I think that they'll edge it out. Um, I think that they're just they're superior as a team. Um, they've had more success throughout the league. I think they know that this is the time. Um, I think they realize that. Listen, we're not safe anymore. They were safe like through first like two and a half stages but now it's it's getting bad 
And um, I think they're going to respond to that. And I think they're going to win this match 3-1. to one. Next, we have the LA Gladiators getting their second match of the week um, out of the way in two days against another team that is playing both their matches in two days, the Florida Mayhem. So uh, this time, Gladiators will be attacking first and Florida will be defending first. They're playing on Kings Row, Hanamura, Lijang Tower, and then Dorado. So I think... Um, with this, with these maps, it's going to be nice for the Gladiators because they get to play on all the same maps, like in their two matches, except uh, the game three. They're on Oasis against Houston, and they're on Li Zhang against the Him. So I think that having the other ones the same, they can like prepare their strategy, like have their strategy really set for these teams, and then maybe if it doesn't go well against Houston, then you make an adjustment. You say, okay, this is what we're going to do against like Florida because it's over here. Um, and they're a different team, so we got to prepare a little bit different for them. Um, so I think I think this should be an easy win for Gladiators. Um, I think the, also depending if they do lose to Houston, they they're really really going to need like these kind of wins against uh, a weaker team in Florida. So I think that they're going to take this one uh, 4-0. Um, Florida has looked pretty decent on Hanamura. I think that that would be their best chance for a win. But I think that. Uh, Gladiators should be able to take Kings Row and Li Zhang with ease. Those are very good maps for them. Um, and the meta is good on those maps. And the, uh, Gladiators have not proved that at all. So it could be 2-1 to one going into on escort maps. So if Florida really has a great game, like if, if side player's in and he's like doing his hard carry, if like their tanks are staying back, if the supports aren't getting picked, this one could potentially go to game 5. I don't think it will. I think LA will come out... Um, pretty energized they've already won a uh a dorado game against the fuel which was which was very close but i think that um because of the new meta and because florida has not adjusted to it yet uh la will win this one four to zero and uh but for their odds get that map differential up a little bit and the final week is the final match of thursday it's the philadelphia fusion taking on the shanghai dragons they're playing on Blizzard World, Horizon Lunar Colony, Oasis, and then Watchpoint, Gibraltar. Now, these are teams that uh, in stages 1 and 3, Fusion and Shanghai went to a game 5. Shanghai took two maps off of them. So you're thinking, well, Shanghai uh, is still no wins, weakest team in the league. Philadelphia is looking super good this stage. This is going to be a romp. I think it will be a little closer. Um, I do think Philly won't have to go to five this time. I think that this meta has... Their second match was against... I'm going to say Philly 4 them just because um, if this was like stage three all over again, if it was the same meta, I would say it would be three to one. I has proven that they have not figured out this uh, this meta yet. They just, they've just they looked a bit lost, and um, because of that, I think Philly will take it uh, with ease. Oh, that's right. Philadelphia crushed Florida. Last last week, yeah, that's right. They four rode them. Um, so yeah, I see this one as another four row. Um, there's a couple, yeah, a couple of matches in these first two days where it's like I don't think they're going to be very close, um, but we'll see. I mean, sometimes with the weaker teams, sometimes it just takes them a little while to adapt. Like if Florida and Shanghai have uh, come out with this new strategy they've been scrimming with and working on. And it's like it's in tune with the new meta and it's working better. I could see them putting up fights against like the Valiant, against the Gladiators, against the Fusion, um, for the Mayhem and for the Dragons. So we shall see um, if they made those adjustments. But from what I've seen, this is going to be a romp. Philly, 4 to 0. So there are my predictions for today and tomorrow of Overwatch League. I hope you guys have a great couple days. Good luck to their teams, unless they're playing against mine. We got some great matches on Friday and Saturday, so stay tuned for those. Um, yeah, a lot of good ones. So uh, I'll see you then.